Hello everyone, it's Stephanie with Lumeria Star and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to take a look at the decks I worked with in May and this video is just a kind of a space for me to just kind of reflect on um, the decks I chose to work with, um, what worked, what didn't, and yeah, that's really all this is. Also, disclaimer, there is, if you hear lots of birds chirping, I get a lot of questions if I have pet birds and I don't. Um, my window in my office is literally like right here and like a bird family has like permanently made its home there. So if you hear all the chirping, that's why. So we'll just welcome them into the video rather than fight or resist them. So um, yeah, that's the bird noise. Anyway, um, let's just get into the decks and see what I worked with in May and have a chat about it. So um, one of the decks I worked with for my tarot edit this month is um, the Mother Tarot. This is by uh, Ren McMurdo Breaknack. Uh, this is the same creator as the Dark Days Tarot. And I really love this deck for springtime. I feel like it has such a great springy, earthy, mother nature, empress type energy. Um, just like the Dark Days, it is a square deck. So that makes it definitely interesting to work with. You can work with um, like the directionals of it. I really don't, but that's something that you could do. And I really love this deck. Let me move the box out of the way. I really love this deck. And I found that as I was spending time with it in May, this is a deck that likes to be read slowly. Um, very similar to Dark Days. I feel like the artwork is very intricate. It's got like very fine line artwork and details. And... To me personally, when I read with this deck, I don't like to pull too many cards because I feel like the message gets like muddy and unclear. So this is the kind of deck that really, in my opinion, at least in my practice, um, likes to be read slowly and really only a few cards at a time. Um, it could be a one card pull, um, two feels really good, three to me is the max. I don't like to do any larger um, spreads than three with this deck and I think it just yeah she just she's she's slower she wants you to take her time with her and that's just kind of the the vibe I get with the mother tarot we have a lot of like feminine energy in this we've got like a lot of like uteruses a lot of nudity a lot of like body acceptance like there's all different types of bodies lots of body hair so we're really normalizing bodies in all of its forms so this is just a really really great deck that i love to pull out in the springtime so this was really perfect uh for the month of may may definitely has you know it's spring and it also has mother's day too so it just it's just great for that energy in my opinion so that is the Mother Tarot, and this was a win. This is a deck I really enjoy, and I don't really see ever leaving my collection. As you know, or maybe you don't know. Oh, there's the birds. Um, I'm definitely in a space where I'm really kind of culling my collection, um, because I realize I don't want to be a collector. I just want a curated selection of decks that I really love and are really intentional and decks that don't really feel like they have a place in that, then I, I send them off to another home. So um, I think this year, which is 2023, is a lot about me calling my collection, curating the selection I have, and rehoming a lot of decks, as well as my no-buy, which I'm still going strong with. Well, actually... Let me be honest with myself. I backed one Kickstarter, I will say, and that is the um, the new Solara Occulto Tarot. So I did back that. So technically, 
I have bought one deck this year. I don't know if that deck's even coming out this year, but yep, so I did that. Anyway, but I, it feels good to have like a really, I guess I'm not in a no buy year anymore. I'm in a very low buy year, so I have backed one deck. All right, so let's take a look at another deck. Oh, the birdies. Hey, keep it down. Okay. So another deck I worked with for the month of May is the Black Violet Tarot. This is the second edition. This is the, the deluxe edition. Um, I do also have the Cherry Blossom edition. And I will say that they read differently for me, which maybe sounds kind of silly to some because it really is the same artwork, just different colors. The Cherry Blossom edition is black and like this really pretty um peachy pink cherry blossom color and then this one's just black and white and really the artwork is essentially the same like there's been a few tweaks here and there but this one really does read differently for me and I just I just really enjoy it um I think this is a really great deck for versatility um because it's black and white I feel like it can be read all year if that even makes sense. Like, I just feel like it has this kind of like neutral tone to it, like that it can kind of work with any season. I love the extra cards. We have a coven, coven card here, which is great. That's not in the other decks. Um, and because it's black and white, it pairs really well with other decks. Like it pairs really well with really bright and colorful decks, which I tend to bring out during spring and summer. So this one is just an awesome reader really enjoy it. I have nothing but positive things to say about this deck and it also feels um witchy without like trying to be like overly witchy. Like sometimes decks that really try hard like the everyday witch which is not at all my aesthetic. I don't really feel drawn to use those but this one feels witchy in like an understated way and I really appreciate that. Look at this ghost card. So good. So this one is amazing to work with i i love the size the the card stock i love the matte black edges and then these really sleek and sexy um matte backs with these like spot gloss flowers it's just it's it's just a gorgeous deck and it's just highly versatile in my opinion and just a solid reader so this is probably a deck i'll be using pretty much all year i don't really feel like this is a seasonal deck let me get that back in the box. So that is the Black Violet Tarot. And I will show you um, a deck I was pairing it with uh, for the month of May. So that I was pairing with this deck right here, which is the Botanica Tarot. This is by um, Kevin J. Stanton. This is an indie deck, but I believe it's actually gone mass market recently. So this deck is absolutely gorgeous. It came with all these extras. Like these are like little, almost like metal, like punch outs. I don't really know what it is. We have some stickers I've never stuck anywhere. I just keep it with the deck and then also a patch. So I just keep this all in the box. Oh my gosh, the birds. Hey. Keep it down. Keep it down. Um, let's see. The deck also came with uh, this cute little like title card. This belongs to. And then a whole bunch of art prints that are actually postcards, which I've not like used, but I, it's just so cute that it comes with that. So let me put those back in the box. So this deck is absolutely gorgeous, um, but it is a deck that kind of like intimidates me. Here are the backs and we've got the shiny gold. So it's absolutely stunning. I love the combination of the, the flowers and botanicals with like the stark black backgrounds. I think it's gorgeous, but this deck is a hard reader for me. And maybe it's because I don't know the language of flowers. Um, I love flowers, but I don't know that like the meanings and the symbolism. Also, a lot of the illustrations are really intricate and I just don't even know what the flower is. Um, and there's no words on it. So we just have like these symbols. So this is 10 of cups. Um, the majors just have symbols. So I believe, 
the angel wings is uh, temperance I want to say see now I don't even know so it comes with a little white book I'm just gonna look now and that's why this deck is a little bit of a hard reader for me no that's the chariot see so it's it's a hard reader for me to just pick up and use by itself so what I was doing is was pairing this with the um the black violet tarot and this is another one that like really just only likes one or two cards um and I felt like that had a nice balance to it so you can just see artwork is absolutely stunning but it's just not an easy reader for me but I love the artwork so much and I do just love flowers and botanicals so much like this one I'm definitely going to keep but you know this one probably deserves like a deep dive study as well um that's not the deck I chose to do that with this month but super gorgeous I believe it's mass market now, so I'd be interested to see what the deck looks like if any changes had been made to it. Um, you can see like that would be the scales, that's so justice. We have the death flower, so that's death. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous, but it's, it's a little, little bit of a tricky deck. Um, so that paired really nicely with the black violet, and then another deck I will show you in just a minute. So that is the Botanica Tarot by Kevin J. Stanton, and this is the um, Indie Edition. So along with those two decks, I was using this Oracle deck, the Sacred Creators Oracle. This is by Chris Ann Donnelly. A lot of you are probably familiar with this deck. Um, this does have an Indie Edition, but this one is the Mass Market. Comes with a really really great guidebook highly suggest like it you know goes into the cards and then it gives you like journal prompts and like kind of like inquiry questions to use which I really love we've got these uh, white backs and I love how it's just like a, a small little message and we've got these just bright vivid colors so this one I think pairs really nicely oh, the birds um, this pairs really nicely with other bright colored decks so it looked really pretty with the Botanica Tarot. Um, what else did this pair nicely with? It paired nicely with the Spolio, which I also worked with this month. So I'll show you guys that too. But this is definitely a really, really great, versatile Oracle deck that if you don't have in your collection, highly suggest. And it is mass market, so it's super affordable. Um, you can use this as affirmation cards. You can use this as journal prompts, which I do. Um, you can use this as clarity for a tarot reading. Like I've done all of those. So I really, really love this deck and um, I use this pretty frequently and this was this was just really fun to work with. So that one is a win in my book. This one's not going anywhere. So this is the Sacred Creators Oracle by Chris Ann. And I believe this is, um, who's the publisher? Hay House. So you can get this, you know, anywhere online. All right. So the deck I worked with, like uh, did a deep dive with this month is um, this new deck to my collection. This was sent to me for review by the creators. This is the Be With Your Body Tarot. And I absolutely adore, adore, adore this deck. Um, let me pull this out. So this deck is exactly as the title suggests. It's a deck to really connect better with your body. And that's definitely work I've been doing as of recently. So this came at the perfect time. I love these backs. So basically all the images are bodies and like flowers and botanicals. So just love everything about that. These are the edges. And this is a standard tarot size. And the cardstock's like a really nice kind of silky mat. So the suits are renamed. Uh, feet are pentacles, which totally makes sense. Eyes are swords. Um, the majors are still titled um, like traditionally. Hips are cups, which I love that um, renaming because uh, typically our hips are where we hold a lot of like repressed emotions. Um, and hands are wands. So this deck is awesome. It's like simplistic while not being, like I don't really consider this a pippish deck because I do get a lot out of the imagery. Um, it's got this like limited color palette, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. It feels, I love this um, 
Queen of Hands, which is the Queen of Wands. Um, it just feels really earthy and grounded. Um, it's this deck is awesome. I hope more people are like seeing this and wanting to check it out because I highly suggest it if you want a deck for self love work, uh, self compassion work, body acceptance, body love, things like that. It's such a beautiful deck and an awesome reader. And then the guidebook is really great. So for each card, you have astrological meanings, uh, the plants that are shown. Um, you have upright and reversed. And it all, of course, is in like through the lens of like your body and connecting to it. And then each card also has an affirmation. So the Empress affirmation. I feel and connect with the sensations in my body. This will help me to be nourished on many levels. Like it's, and it has that for even, um, all of the minors too. Everything gets an affirmation. So it's, it's just so awesome. And I want like more people to discover this deck. It is new. So I, I understand why I don't see it, um, a lot out there yet, but I highly suggest because it's just such an awesome, awesome deck, and I really enjoyed um, working closely with this for the month of May. So this is the Be With Your Body Tarot. This is an indie deck. This is written by Sarah Jane Chapman and illustrated by Sarah Streasy. I believe that's how you pronounce it. So amazing. Highly suggest. Check it out. Okay, so another um, oracle deck I was using this month is my very uh, modified version of a yogic path tarot. So this is by Sahara Rose and illustrated by Danielle Noel. Um, let me take a sip of my tea. And I will show you all what I did with this. I do have a full video on this if in case you missed it. So definitely check it out on my channel. I did a full walkthrough and kind of also shared um, how I, like my creative process, like how I did it. So I really love Danielle Noel's artwork and I also love Sahara Rose. Um, I've read a couple of her books, but the, the keywords for this deck, despite me practicing yoga, they just didn't work for my practice. I had to really rely on the guidebook and I didn't really want to. And it just like didn't work with pairing it with tarot and my journal practice. It just, it wasn't working. So I toyed around with rehoming this deck for a long time, but I was like, no, like, let me just make this work for me. So essentially chopped off the keywords, um, rounded the edges, and then I basically restructured it. And I uh, looked at each card intuitively and tried to figure out like what that image meant to me. And I also took into account what the card originally meant and sometimes they aligned and that was awesome and sometimes they didn't align and that's okay but I wanted um the deck to have meaning for me and I wanted it to work for me so above all I was looking at each card and just really trying to figure out what this image means to me and I really love the results I'm so pleased with this like so pleased um it definitely didn't get enough play for the month of May, so I'll probably keep this out. Maybe use it as like affirmations, like at my 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 desk for work. Um, I can definitely journal with these two. I can even like create journal prompts for each of these because this is a very like handmade deck for me. But yeah, I'm just so happy how that came out, and um, this paired really nicely with another deck I am about to show you. That is my very modified version of a yogic path tarot. Um, love it. Love it. Okay. So the deck I paired that with all month was in this pouch right here. And this is my very modified spolia tarot. So this is the deck I bought when it very first came out. Um, and it's a chunk. It is a chunk of a deck. I did edge these in like an antique kind of like bronzy color, which I think is kind of cool. It makes it look aged. Um, this one I really, really heavily modified. So I took off all the edges. I had edges, like a border all the way around, which I really hated. 
and then I just rounded the corners and then I edged it in that antique color. It has all the astrological signs and it also has, um, so all the astrological signs here. And then it also has elemental cards. This deck is really beautiful. Um, I love that it's usable for me now that I modified it because before when I didn't modify it, I just wasn't using it. It was like a block that I had. I just I hated those edges so much. So I am such a fan of, you know, if you're holding on to a deck for a reason, like there's something about it you love, but you don't know why you're not using it, highly suggest to, to reflect and be like, okay, what do I love about it? Is that worth keeping? And then what don't I like about it? And is, is that something I can change? Because otherwise I would have given this deck away um, I almost did a handful of times, and I'm so glad I didn't because this is out of print, and it just feels really personal now that I've taken the time. I mean, these these were a labor of love. Like, this is a lot of cards in this deck. I want to say it's over 100 cards with, or maybe not, oh, close to 100, with the, um, the Zodiac cards and the Element cards. So this took a long time to modify when I did this a couple years ago. Oh my gosh, these birds. And this was so fun to work with. I That's part of the fun of this no buy year is when I need a fix of something new, I'm like, you know, normally I'd be like, oh, let me go buy a deck. And I'm like, no, you have so many beautiful, beautiful decks sitting there needing, you know, love and attention. And I was able to be, you know, intentional and mindful and connect with decks that I have that I've been kind of neglecting, so that's that's been a fun process for me. I also remembered um, how fun and how like witty and great this little white book is. The writing is oftentimes um, very to the point. It can be funny. It could be a little like punch you in the face truth. Um, there, there's a humor to the writing in this, and this is such a great guidebook. I definitely used this the whole month when I was um, working with this deck. So this was super fun and this pairs really nicely with the Yogic Path Tarot. So this is the Spolia first edition for the win. Definitely a keeper for me. I'm hoping they do come out with a second edition because I know a lot of people are looking for this deck. Um, so hopefully that happens sometime. So that is that deck. Okay, we have two more decks. This is one everyone has seen. This is the Seasons of the Witch Beltane Oracle. It's no surprise. I am absolutely obsessed with this deck along with the whole series. My, my witchy practice and divination practice is largely um, seasonal. So these seasonal decks are perfect. I love these backs and I love this artwork and I just love how this deck really helps connect me to seasonal and just elemental energies. So I use this for April and May. I honestly cannot wait to have this set of eight. Like that's going to be so much fun having this set of eight full decks. Fingers crossed they finish the set. I do know uh, Maybon's starting to come out like some people already have it. And in bulk is the next one. So we already will have, what is that, three, four, five. Um, so we'll have three more to complete the set. But it'll be so fun to have a complete set and just have a an Oracle deck to work with for each Sabbath and to just move me through the wheel of a year. That would, ugh, that's just gonna be so satisfying. So I really, really hope that they finish the set. Um, I do know they, they switched the, um, artist. This is Giada Rose. I know the next two are a different artist, um, which I was a little bit bummed about, uh, but the new artwork also looks beautiful, so it, I'm sure it's going to work. But I do absolutely love the sensual goddess, empress energy in this deck in particular. It's really satisfying. It really helps me connect to spring energy. So that is the Seasons of the Witch, Beltane Oracle, for the win, not going anywhere in my top favorite oracles, this whole set, honestly. 
And that is that. This is a rock pool deck. Okay, and lastly is this deck that I backed last year on Kickstarter. Let me take a sip of my tea. This is the Mike Wilcox Tarot and Oracle. I do also have a full walkthrough of this deck on my YouTube that I just recently posted, probably in the last two weeks. So if this interests you, go ahead and check that out. This is an absolutely stunning set. Let's get that out. Um, this comes with a gorgeous hardcover book that like honestly could just like sit out on a bookshelf or a coffee table because it's just it's it's just so pretty like I just want to like look at it and touch it it's got all these beautiful like foil accents oh so gorgeous it comes with an inner tough box here so this deck isn't normally something the structure isn't normally something I would I would buy it's got the um, 22 major arcana cards and then so it doesn't have the remaining um, the minors it so it basically has the 22 major arcana it has oracle cards and it has zodiac cards so I am not using this as a tarot I am using this simply as an oracle deck even though it's called tarot and oracle to me a tarot needs the 78 cards so I'm just using this as an oracle deck and it's it's absolutely stunning. It's actually a wonderful reader. I really enjoyed working with this deck. The card stock's amazing. It's it's linen finish, but it's not the super slippery kind because some of the linen finish cards are so slippery for me. They just fall out of my hands. This one is a dream to shuffle in my opinion. We've got light cards and we've also got really shadowy cards, so it feels balanced which I appreciate. I, I'm really starting to move away from um, Oracle decks that are just too light and love. Like they don't feel, they don't feel like they fit in my practice. Like I really need something balanced. I need some of the darkness um, because I feel like that's what life is. It's, it's that balance. So this deck is just so gorgeous. I'll probably be still using this uh, this year. I'm not going to put it away yet because I didn't get enough time with it. And it's stunning. And I think I actually want to, because I'm using this as an oracle, I'm probably going to use this um, for journaling in the next couple months and just work my way through the deck because the book is so great and it has keywords. Not keywords. Well, it does have keywords. What I mean is it has um, journal questions and like inquiry questions. Look at this death card. Oh, gorgeous. So this is the Mike Wilcox Tarot and Oracle. So, so good. Love this. I got this. Um, I, This wasn't a Kickstarter, but this was a pre-order last year in 2022. And I think I paid like $75 for the set. And I want to say now it is available or it's available for second printing. And it's, it's, it's a little pricey. I want to say it's like one... 25 and that's why I did the pre-order because it was it was a lot more affordable so but if you're drawn to this artwork just I highly suggest go get it go do it because it, it's it's so awesome so um yeah these are my decks for April everything felt like a really big win in my opinion we've got so many good decks nothing I was disappointed with showed off some of my modded decks so many good ones excellent oracle decks botanica tarot is i struggle with it but i think it just needs the right attention and the black violet tarot is such a win so these are all the decks i worked with in the month of may of 2023 i'd love to hear um what your thoughts are in any of these decks do you have them do you love them do you not love them let me know all the comments down below um i hope you all enjoyed this video i'm really enjoying um doing videos just to like reflect on what i worked with each month um it helps me be really mindful with my practice and also with my spending habits and me trying to not spend and also figuring out what I want to keep, what 
you know, I want to curate and, and kind of keep in my collection and things that I want to kind of release back into the world. That's been feeling um, really good for my practice. So I'd love to hear all the things from you. And if you enjoyed this, feel free to give this video a like, um, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free and it's a way to um, just support my channel and my content if you enjoy it. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.